Hola, this is Kathleen Evans, International Living's Costa Rica Correspondent. Today, I'm going to take you on a journey around Costa Rica, and we're going to talk about the six most popular regions in the country. Now, International Living has been covering Costa Rica since the inception of the magazine in 1979. So it has been a popular place for decades. But what that means to you is that if you come to Costa Rica, you're not going to be a pioneer. Everybody has done this already for you. So you're gonna find things like North American style amenities. You're gonna find some better infrastructure, more paved roads, uh, better schools if you have kids. These sort of things, uh, shopping at your fingertips, that you might not find in some of the less, less expensive or rustic countries that you might be considering. So let's start off with the number one expat region. And I've got my trusty Costa Rica map here. We're going low tech uh, because we're not using graphics. Now, the Central Valley encompasses the capital city of San Jose and pretty much runs from San Ramon to Cartago, which is about 90 miles. Now, the Central Valley is a bit of a misnomer because it's not actually a valley. Um, it's an elevated plateau ranging from 3,000 feet to 5,000 feet. And because of that elevation, there's perfect weather there. And every expat will tell you um, that's one of the main reasons they chose to live there. Many of the homes don't even have heating or air conditioning, rarely getting above 80 degrees Fahrenheit and rarely getting below 60 almost anywhere, depending on which thermal climb you're in. Now, um, you can live big city living right in the middle of San Jose, and of course that is gonna offer you museums, art galleries, uh, sports, entertainment, uh, all kinds of shopping, big box stores, and of course the best medical in the country as well. Now, a lot of the expats who live there choose to live in one of the suburbs, such as Heredia, Eluela, Santa Ana, uh, or Escazú, to name some of the most popular ones. And this way, they can enjoy suburban living, be close to the city for anything, but also enjoy life a little bit outside the city with spectacular mountain views all around. But also part of the Central Valley are some of the other smaller, country-type towns like Atenas uh, or Gracia or Cartago or San Ramon, which is a little bit bigger than some of the aforementioned ones. And um, each of them has their own little personality, uh, very tight expat communities, uh, beautiful housing options uh, from apartments to lovely developments and that sort of thing. They're, they're nestled in the mountains. They've got gorgeous views. Um, you'll, you'll find coffee plantations and uh, sugar cane and that sort of thing. So it's pretty much whatever your style is. If you don't want to live on the beach, you can find it in the Central Valley. Um, some of the other things I want to mention, it's also where our main international airport is airport code SJO in, uh, in suburban Eloela, right next to the city. And uh, what's nice about choosing to live there also is that you are right in the middle of the country. So if you do like to travel around and explore new things, you're kind of right in the middle of all the action. So um, there's a reason why 70% of the population of the country choose to live in the central area. So, next up, we're going to be talking about the Lake Arinal area. Now, the Lake Arinal area is up here in the northwestern part of the country. It's the country's largest freshwater lake, and it's nestled between the provinces of Eloela 
and Juan Acosta. Now, why do people like to live in the Lake Arinal area? Well, for one, you're not gonna find large-scale development like you will in some of the other communities around the country. Um, it sits on this beautiful 33 square mile freshwater lake and many of the newer homes that they're building in the small towns that dot the lake come with a boat slip so you can actually enjoy water sports or fishing out on the lake as well. Now the most popular expat town on the lake is called Nuevo Arenal and it's, it's small rural country living just like all of the towns but you will find everything you need there for day-to-day -day living. A gas station, restaurants, uh, shopping, pharmacies, banks, that sort of thing. So a lot of people are choosing to live there. There's also a lovely community in La Fortuna, which is on the far side of the lake, closer to the volcano. So uh, there's also a small airport there. And there's a great multitude of different restaurants, uh, some of them very high-end actually, because it's a big tourist destination. So expats um, and tourists have been coming there for years to take advantage of the beauty of the area and to enjoy this beautiful volcano. There's lots of outdoor activities. There is the Arenal National Park, and there you can enjoy everything from zip lining, horseback riding, hiking, uh, whitewater rafting. So there's a, a lot of outdoor activities available. Um, there's also these beautiful waters. There's so many of the hotels have hot springs. You can buy a day pass and go enjoy theirs, or you can just do it out in nature. The locals know where to find these beautiful springs where you can actually sit back in the rapids and enjoy the geothermal waters that are very healthy for the mind, body, and soul. Um, as I mentioned, there's not a large development everywhere. Uh, it is country living, so a lot of people who like the big city activity might find it a little bit too quiet there. However, the expats who love there, who live there, enjoy that area completely because you're one with nature, there's mountains surrounding you, and it, it is very quiet. Now, um, as far as major medical, you're not going to find it right there. There are some small clinics in the area. Or there is an, uh, a town just off the lake called Tilleran where you can find some larger medical uh, centers. If there's anything major, you would have to go to Liberia or to San Jose. And uh, the, the lake area is about uh, equidistant from both of the main airports, which is nice to have that, that choice if you want to fly in or out of, of one or the other. So um, as far as the weather, it's absolutely beautiful. Um, no need for heat or air conditioning most of the year as well. So all of these reasons make it a great expat destination. So you might want to check out Lake Arinal and Arinal Volcano next time you are in Costa Rica. And next up, I'm going to take you to the beautiful beaches of Costa Rica's Gold Coast. Now, the Gold Coast consists of this piece of Guanacaste and uh, the bottom part of the Nicoya Peninsula is what we're going to cover now. And these popular beaches run the coast and each of these beaches have their own community, their own personality, their own color of sand and, and their own type of water, whether it's a great surfing beach or a quiet calm cove. And uh, we're Looking at Playa Hermosa, Playa del Coco, Las Catalinas, uh, Petrero, Flamingo, Conchal, Tamarindo, on south to places like Nosara, Samara, and all the way down to the bottom to Santa Teresa and Malpais. So we've got a lot of popular expat beaches 
all along the Gulf Coast. So why do people choose to live there? Well, for one, there's the least amount of rain in Guanacaste. So if you like a lot of sunshine, this is the best place for you to be in Costa Rica. Now it's consistently warm to hot temperatures, rarely getting below 79 at the coldest, and it does soar into the 90s. So if you enjoy heat and sunshine, it's a good spot for you. Now, uh, once they opened Liberia International Airport, commerce really started ex exploding here because the folks that lived here didn't have to make that four hour drive to San Jose anymore. So you've got an international airport, you have private and public hospitals, you've got big box stores that have moved in, you have an immigration office, you have a, a driver's license office, and even 10 years ago, you weren't able to do all those things that you can do in Liberia now. So it has made this beach area extremely popular. Um, there are more championship golf courses in uh, the Gold Coast area than the rest of Costa Rica. And there is excellent Pacific diving off the coastal Las Catalinas Islands, which has gained a lot of popularity uh, with divers. Now, as I mentioned, every beach has its own personality. So if you like a touristy international town with lots of restaurants and uh, different food choices and things to do, you might want to look at a place like Coco or Tamarindo. But then there's also lots of little sweet, uh, quiet communities. And the only way you're really going to be able to discover it is if you get in your car and drive the coast. So um, I do recommend doing that if you're interested in the beach areas of Costa Rica. Now one other thing I did want to mention about Nicoya, which is all part of this one peninsula, it is actually considered one of the world's only five blue zones. Now, maybe you've never heard of that before, but this um, is something that Geo National Geographic researchers have came across. Across the world, they notice these five zones where this, there's an unusually large amount of centenarians, or people who are living over 100 years old. And the deeper that they dug into this, the more they found out that these blue zones share some really important things like abundant sunshine for vitamin D, uh, less processed foods, active lifestyles, living off the land, uh, close ties with friends and family, and a deep faith. And that's one of the things you'll find in this region. So you'll also find a lot of yoga studios, um, healing, uh, type retreats and that sort of thing as well. So it makes this part of the country um, quite a beautiful and unique place to be. So next we're going to take a look at the Central Pacific Coast. Now we're going to be exploring the Central Pacific Coast and that is pretty much this region right here um, well, from Punta Arenas on down to Manuel Antonio. So the most popular expat places here would be um, Playa Eradura, where there is a, a large upscale uh, development called Los Sueños. Playa Jaco, Esterios Este, and down the coast to Capos and Manuel Antonio. So the Central Pacific Coast is the most established in the country. Uh, these are the beaches that are closest to the capital in San Jose. So for people who want to be within an hour, hour, or an hour and a half or two, um, they choose to live in this part of the country so they can get to San Jose uh, easily. Um, it is the heart of your best health care, 
your best shopping, etc. Um, it's also, of course, close to the major international airport. Now, there are two big marinas there, uh, one in Aradura at uh, Los Sueños that I mentioned, and one in Capos, which has recently been expanded. So you're going to see a lot of great uh, sport fishing and uh, that sort of thing because of these two excellent marinas. Now, the Central Coast is a little bit more uh, tropical and lush. Uh, it's not quite as dry as Guanacaste, so you see a little bit longer of a rainy season there, but the trade-off is that uh, everything is greener. Uh, there are a couple of good surfing spots along the coast, um, one of those being Playa Hermosa, where we see a lot of international surfing competitions that happen. Uh, there's also many housing choices, so if you like something that is kind of like the Vegas of Costa Rica on the beach, you can find that in Jaco. There's casinos, uh, there's all kinds of nightlife, uh, shopping, and of course a beautiful beach there as well. But then uh, there's nice quieter places like Estorio's Este, where you can um, enjoy some affordable housing in the area and enjoy a very quiet neighborhood. The uh, most visited national park is in Manuel Antonio, which is absolutely stunning. Some of the prettiest beaches there as well. Um, and it is also home to the largest uh, LBGTQ community. So uh, if you're looking for an alternative lifestyle, it is very gay friendly there. It's a big arts community as well and uh, quite stunning. You can find uh, lovely housing all along the coast and there is more uh, clear title property in this part of the country where you can actually own title to the land uh, on the beach compared to some of the other places in, in the country. So that kind of wraps up the central Pacific Coast. And next, we're going to head on down to the southern zone. Now, the southern zone encompasses this entire area on the Panamanian border. So we're really looking at the Costa Bayana area, which is the whale coast of the trio of cities, uh, Playa Dominical, Playa Ubita, and Ojo Chal. Okay, these, there's this trio, and then you also have some popular expat areas um, as far as in Golfito, and also all the way down here in Pavones. Uh, this part is called the Osa Peninsula, and this is primarily our main uh, national park uh, called Corcovado, which National Geographic researchers call one of the most biodiverse places on Earth. So it's pretty incredible. Now, why would people want to live in the southern zone? Well, everything is eternally green. Uh, they do see a little bit more uh, rain than the northern parts of the country, uh, but it is absolutely stunning, unspoiled, natural, uh, much less developed. Uh, the, the road was paved down there probably going on a decade now, um, but before that, things were kind of slow to develop because it took a longer time to get down there. Um, but I can't say enough about the wildlife and the biodiversity. It's anywhere you would live there. If you sit out in, in your garden like this, you might have a monkey come chattering by or any number of different wildlife, so it's pretty cool. Um, the real estate there tends to be a little bit less expensive than some of the other larger beach communities uh, to the north um, because it is a little bit less developed. Now, in Golfito, there's a duty-free shopping zone, and there you can buy everything from tires, to booze, to furniture, to linens, um, and so much more. And uh, this is a very popular place for 
expats and Ticos from all over the country to make a road trip and do uh, major shopping there for appliances and that sort of thing as well. Also in Golfito, they've put in a new mega marina. Uh, they are working on phase two currently of it, but this is the only marina, marina on the Pacific side um, that can handle mega yachts. Um, it has a giant refueling station, and uh, because of this new development, we're seeing uh, a, this changing face of Golfito where we're seeing other new developments coming in and uh, new infrastructure, uh, a better airport, and that sort of thing down in the southern zone. And there's also a couple of islands off, uh, off that part of the country, um, Hanyo and Coco, which are great for diving. In fact, um, the best hammerhead schools in the entire world can be found there. So, um, it, there are a lot of great reasons for people to feel a little bit more off the grid when they live in the southern zone. So we've got one more, the Caribbean side, that I'll be sharing with you next. Now, when we talk about the Caribbean side of Costa Rica, we're talking about this whole coast that goes from the Nicaragua border to the Panama border. And this the top part is all protected land and Tortuguero National Park. So you won't see any development along here. As well as Puerto Limon, although it is a larger city, it's a big port city and it's not really popular with expats. So when you hear about expats talking about living in Limon, they are going to be occupying these tiny little beach communities along the coast with the main city being Puerto Viejo. So, let's talk about why people might want to live on the Caribbean side. Um, as I mentioned, it's often overlooked as a destination, partly because it's a little more difficult to get there. There's not a major airport there, so you fly into San Jose, and it's a good four hour drive down there over the Continental Divide which is a two-lane highway and in rainy season is subject to mudslides. So that area tends to be a little bit more isolated. Um, they have consistently tropical weather and they don't really have a defined rainy season. In Costa Rica, our rainy season or green season, as we like to call it, runs typically from May through November, although Many of those months, you might not see much rain until you get into September and October. But on the Caribbean side, um, it's not unusual to see rain even in February. But again, these are small tropical showers that happen and move away quickly. Now, there is an Afro-Caribbean vibe there, which is very unique uh, and you won't see anywhere else in Costa Rica. And you'll see um, great influences in the food, for example. Uh, they'll cook with more chilies. They've got a little more heat in the food. They like to use coconut milk. Um, so it's got that whole Caribbean vibe. Uh, as well as in the music, you'll hear still drums and, uh, and that sort of thing. There's also a Creole language that's spoken there with many of the locals. Um, and you'll hear English as well. Uh, it is definitely less developed. You're not going to see any large developments, any large-scale hotels, any big, major, marquee-named hotels. Everything's very eco-tourist and, and small and often rustic, which is kind of nice. You've got less stress. It's easier to unplug there, and that's why a lot of people enjoy living there. It's, it tends to be a little bit more free-spirited and youthful. Uh, there are not any real big major medical centers. Uh, there are some in Limon, uh, but for anything that you might have, like ongoing treatments, it's probably not the best part of the country because you would have to travel all the way to San Jose for those major treatments. Um, but other things like major shopping and that sort of stuff you can find in the port city of the moment. Uh, 
uh, the nature there is absolutely incredible as well. Similar to what you find in the southern zone, uh, it's not it's it's not unusual to have a sloth climbing a tree next to you, just out in nature. Uh, so a lot of folks really love to get off the grid there. And uh, if it sounds like something that might be of interest, I highly suggest you check out the Caribbean side. And that about wraps up our tour. Uh, thanks for joining me and for putting up with our outdoor bird noises and flapping map. Um, it's been really fun to share these popular spots with you. And uh, I look forward to our next time together. Signing off, Pura Vida, Kathleen Evans with International Living.